Now, a lot of people get a little scared and nervous when they hear the term overclocking. And the reality is, these days, it's pretty safe. It's really hard to actually permanently damage anything. So I'm gonna walk you through the basics. It's not nearly as bad as it sounds. And we're gonna take a look at how to overclock your new custom PC. Let's start with CPU overclocking. This can have the largest overall impact on system performance because it boosts the speed of everything, whether it's games or applications or just running Windows. For Intel platforms, there's a few basic requirements you're going to need to meet. You'll need one of their unlocked CPUs. That means either a K-series or an X-series processor. And you'll also need a compatible motherboard that supports overclocking. That means a Z-series or X-series motherboard. For AMD platforms, the requirements are a little easier. All of AMD's Ryzen processors are unlocked and you need pretty much any of their chipsets except for the A300, which almost no one uses. The system we built in our previous guide uses an Intel Core i7-8700K processor with an MSI Z370 motherboard, so we meet the minimum requirements for overclocking on an Intel platform. We also have a better than average cooler, NZXT's Kraken X62 water cooling solution. You wouldn't want to use an Intel stock cooler, but then the K-series and X-series CPUs don't come with coolers, so that's not really a problem. AMD's boxed coolers are also generally sufficient for overclocking, but my results with overclocking AMD CPUs are relatively mediocre. You can only get maybe an extra 100, 200 megahertz out of it, and it's almost not worth doing because you give up your flexible multipliers. Before we start looking at overclocking, it's important to establish a baseline level of performance. Now is also a good time to check for things like BIOS updates. So if you wanna use a program like CPU ID, you can run that and see what your motherboard name is called, as well as the current BIOS version. I'm actually already running the latest BIOS, so we don't need to go ahead and update. But that's a process that you can do through the motherboard BIOS. You just stick the BIOS files on a USB drive, boot into the system BIOS, and tell it to flash. Before we start redlining our PC with overclocking, we want to know what sort of temperatures as well as performance we're going to get. So I've installed several utilities that will help with that. We've got MSI Afterburner, which can be used for overclocking your graphics card, but it also comes with this convenient monitor. It has graphics card temperatures, usage, clock speeds, as well as your CPU temperatures and usage and clock speeds. Those are all important things to know. So I'm going to fire up a couple of benchmarks here and we'll see how the system performs without overclocking. So we've got Cinebench, a commonly used CPU application and it runs on all 12 threads of the processor. And you can see all these 12 boxes get drawn. Our temperatures on the CPU bump up to about 52 degrees Celsius. That's perfectly fine. Anything below 60 degrees is going to be safe and not something you need to worry about. If you start seeing temperatures go above 70, 80 degrees, that's where you should probably check your system, make sure that the heat sink's mounted properly and verify that it's set up properly before you go to overclocking. So our Cinebench score looks good, right in line with our previous benchmark result. I've also got another application that I like to run called Y-Cruncher. This is one of the most demanding CPU tests that I've found. It uses Intel's AVX 512 instructions and it can really heat up a processor. So you'll see if we check over on the CPU temperature, instead of maxing out at about 52 degrees, we're hitting spikes of 59 degrees Celsius. CPU usage is still nearly 100%. Everything's performing as expected, and we can move on to the next step. One of the other things we need to do is test graphics card performance before we start overclocking both the CPU and graphics card. One of the great games for doing that is Hitman because it has a built-in benchmark that's really easy to run. It also tends to be stressful on both your CPU and your graphics card, making it a good candidate for overclocking both components. We're gonna go into the settings. It's set for Direct3D 12, 1080p, maximum quality, this is important, V-Sync needs to be off, otherwise you will basically run into your monitor's refresh rate. And we'll go ahead and start the benchmark. Now this will take about a minute and a half real time to run. We're not gonna bother to show the whole sequence. We'll skip through it a little bit. The important thing is to look at the final performance and we also wanna check afterburner and see what our GPU temperatures and CPU temperatures are before we start overclocking. With the benchmark finished, let's go ahead and look at afterburner and see what our temperatures and clock speeds are like. Looking at MSI afterburner, you can see that our GPU usage is spiking up to nearly 100%, which is what we like to see. Temperatures are also hitting a maximum of about 65 degrees Celsius. 
and our clock speeds are sitting at 1924 megahertz and the GDDR5X clocks are right around 10 gigabits per second. Looking at our CPU usage, it's clocking at 4.3 gigahertz throughout the benchmark and that's as expected because this is running stock. So now with our baseline established, let's go ahead and look at overclocking. The old school way of doing that is to go into your system BIOS and adjust a few settings. On the MSI BIOS, we're in the default view, so I like to go to the advanced view. We'll go down to the overclock options, and one of the first things you're gonna to need to do is change the OC Explore mode to expert. This will vary by motherboard manufacturer, so you're going to have to probably Google your specific motherboard. Once we've set expert mode, we have a few options for how to overclock. I'm going with the turbo ratio, and we get six options because there's six processor cores. Now we can put 50 as a multiplier into all six options. And that tells us with a 100 megahertz base clock, we're going for five gigahertz. I would also use a minus two offset on our AVX workloads because AVX workloads can often heat up the processor too much. And we might need a little bit of extra voltage. The final thing we need to do in the BIOS is we need to turn on XMP mode for the memory. Most memory these days has an XMP profile. Clicking the button just enables all of the speeds and timings that your memory is certified to run. And 95% of the time, that's all you need to do for memory. It's not even overclocking your memory, really. You're just running it as the memory manufacturer intended. There's one problem with BIOS overclocking, and that's if anything goes wrong, the next time your system reboots, it will still try to help high your overclock settings. I don't really like that because if it's an unstable overclock, you can get stuck in a loop. There are ways around that, but it's often easier to just skip the BIOS overclocking outside of your XMP memory profile and go straight to the Windows programs. For overclocking in Windows, I'm using Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, or XTU. The great thing about this is that it provides a unified interface that shows you all of the same controls, whether you're using an ASUS or ASRock or Gigabyte or MSI motherboard. So let's go ahead and launch that. If you go down to the all controls section, this is where everything you need resides. We've got our CPU multipliers. I've already set these for 50. We've got an AVX ratio offset of 2X, so it will run at 4.8 gigahertz for AVX workloads. We've got a 0.175 voltage offset. And we've also bumped up the processor cast ratio to 47. We'll apply that. Now let's go ahead and see if this runs stable. We'll run the same benchmark as before. Our previous result for Cinebench was 1382. You can see we're running at a steady 4995 megahertz in MSI Afterburner on the CPU. So everything is looking good. CPU temperatures now, however, are spiking about 20 degrees Celsius higher. This is why you need a good CPU cooler if you're going to overclock. And our results are nearly 1600 points. Y Cruncher tends to be even more demanding. As I've said before, it uses AVX instructions, which is why we use that 2X AVX offset. That means it should run at 4.8 gigahertz. Everything's looking okay, 4.8 gigahertz. Temperatures now are spiking up to nearly 80 degrees Celsius. A little bit warmer, but still perfectly fine because we're staying under 85C. And as long as you're not really running this 24 seven at maximum load, you should be perfectly okay. So if we look at the time for Y Cruncher, we went from 64 seconds versus 78 seconds. So we definitely got a healthy speed up from overclocking. Last, we have Hitman. We shouldn't see quite as much of a gain from CPU overclocking for a game, but if it's CPU limited, you could see some healthy performance improvements. We're gonna go ahead and blast through the benchmark sequence again. Previously, we averaged about 125 frames per second. It's not important to look at the instantaneous frame rates. We're looking at the overall improvement. So previously, we were at about 125 frames per second. You can see at the end of the benchmark here, we're averaging closer to 140 frames per second. So because we were CPU limited in Hitman, we got some good gains. With CPU overclocking out of the way, let's look at the last element of overclocking, and that's your graphics card. 
we're gonna turn back to MSI Afterburner, but this time we're not just monitoring, we're going to go ahead and change our settings. We'll max out the power limit, which really isn't that much because we are already using a factory overclocked graphics card. That's important because it somewhat limits how much more we'll get out of it. I've already pre-tested this a bit, so we can only bump up the clock speed about 50 megahertz, but we can increase the memory clock by 500 megahertz. I'll also go into the fan settings and enable a custom profile because I want the fans to kick up to full speed if we get up to 80 degrees Celsius. With that in place, we'll hit apply and let's go ahead and go back to Hitman and run our benchmark one last time. So despite the GPU overclock, we're not getting significantly faster performance in Hitman, but that's because we're running at 1080p and Hitman tends to be more CPU limited at that setting. The important thing is our graphics card overclock was stable, even with our 10% memory overclock, so we could possibly even push that further. That will again vary based on your particular card. These results are by no means going to be applicable to every GPU out there. That takes care of our PC guide to overclocking. Thanks for watching.